I guess when I was about six, I made a self-portrait of myself and people were like, whoa, that really looks like you. And I just kept drawing and drawing. And then once I got to high school, um, I did all of the sciences. Like I thought I needed to do physics and biology and all these like calculus and all that other stuff just to get a good job. But once I hit year 13, I was like, oh, this is not what makes me happy. And I dropped it all. I took all of the arts that I could, like classics, art history, and just kind of absorbed it all that one year. And then that's when I decided, yep, I'm just going to go to Elam and just do what I love and do what I'm good at rather than kind of forcing myself to be someone else. Yeah, that's kind of why I became an artist. So when I started studying at Elam, they made us try like everything. So we did four weeks of printmaking, four weeks of, I don't know, drawing and painting. And um, yeah, I think I was drawn to sculpture because you could make anything out of pretty much everything you find. Yeah, that's kind of what drove me on to do sculpture, just finding things, making things. And then it gets real technical as it goes with woodworking and welding. And I think I like that, like um, quite, consistent progression. Yeah, most of my work um, is named after a place in Hauraki and uh, most of my shows also just take materials from Hauraki, bring them in and use them as like the main material or I'll make kind of abstract versions of these places as well. Yeah, I think most of my work is about Hauraki. I think being Māori, it's just like inherent that you would take care of things if, whether they're people or not and yeah I think a lot of my best relationships have been with like my river and my mountain or or I guess maybe the most memorable relationships yeah and I think I like to sustain those relationships or at least recognize them through my work maybe that's why I'm very much like collaboration with material is a big thing in my practice my mountain is Rangipo, which is kind of the mountain that I see the most when I go back home. But the main one is Te Raio Te Papa, which is this quite, I'm not explain, because Rangipo is quite a nice shape and then Te Raio Te Papa is kind of like a, like a mess. And that's the one that overlooks my marae. And my awa are waiho. It's a bit muddy at the moment, but I guess it would have been like real beautiful back in the day. And Ohine Muri, I like that one because whenever we drive up like Karangahake Gorge, that's the one that kind of follows you on your way there. Whenever I go to Hauraki, I usually use like, drawing just with a pencil or a pen and photography, sometimes text, like I'll just write what I feel about this place while I'm there and that just all contributes to my research and I guess that kind of gets the process ball rolling and that's how I also create my mind maps as well. I'm like, this was a cool image. Put that in the middle of a page, expand, and then think about forms related to that image. So my work in Mangere Art Centre, it's called Toru, and it's part of a an exhibition called um, Te O Pekinga Marama, and that's about the celestial rise and tohu and what the stars mean and how we're inherently informed um, like how our creativity is inherently informed throughout through our, like whaka papa and all that kind of stuff so very like up there ideas and my work is like a triptych of um, pastel drawings and I was thinking like tohu rhymes with toru so I just went on that um, concept of the number three and the number three I feel is real significant in Te Ao Māori. So the triptych shows like Te Kore, Te Pō and then Te Ao Marama. Um, just these primordial phases of creation. I kind of want to make a playground, <laughs> which is really, I feel like that's very ambitious, but I do want to make a playground in these kind of pools of water. I don't know, just trying to see how um, like normal everyday things or housing or places of shelter or leisure exist within a wetland and yeah seeing how practical it is and 
Auckland Art Fair, the curator for the projects, which is like emerging artists, he contacted me and then asked me if I would like to collaborate with Yume. And um, Jessie, uh, who's like the founder of Yume, she, she just told me about her Chinese heritage and how a lot of the stories and a lot of her like familial relations kind of just helped her design the bags and she was really really passionate and persistent and I thought that that was really cool that aligned with how I am and I ended up making stands with muslin cloth and it was holding all the sand that I collected from the beaches down in Hauraki and when you touch the bottom it could like you could get a handful of the sand or it would just drop to the ground which is kind of made its own landscape found materials, I kind of just let them be however they want to be. Um, yeah, I try not to work found materials too much because otherwise it just becomes what I wanted it to be rather than what it is. I feel like my art practice kind of opened up doorways to Māori mythology and being able to walk through Hodaki and see those mythologies in real life, being like, oh, this is why they came up with this story or you see a mound and a wetland and be like, oh, they do look like stomachs, which is why Kopuatai was named Kopuatai, which is like stomach and tides. So that kind of, yeah, being able to see all these stories and histories in a place while you're walking around is like really cool to me. And I guess that's how it all ties together.